Hi there and welcome to another video from Funding Store. Today we're going to have a look at funding through the business life cycle, how it changes as the business grows, matures, which kinds of funding are suitable for which stages of the life cycle. Here comes the presentation. Let's start with an explanation of what we mean by the business life cycle. This is a way of describing the different characteristics of a business as it goes through natural cycles of start-up, growth, maturity and decline. In reality, there is no preordained structure for how a business will change, nor how long such change will take. But calling it a life cycle allows advisors and consultants to articulate different characteristics of businesses in different environments. This might cover key challenges they face, management issues or financial performance. Within this video, we'll focus on the funding characteristics of different business types. It should also be noted that there are different versions of the business life cycle. We have kept ours relatively straightforward so that we can describe typical funding solutions, allowing you to understand the general themes before taking further expert advice. There is no preordained length of time for each phase, nor defined divisions, but each stage does have different characteristics that pose their own challenges. Our business life cycle has four stages. In summary, a business will initially start life in a startup phase, when it is set up by an entrepreneur to exploit a perceived opportunity in the market. As the business starts to get established, it will enter a growth phase, where levels of sales increase and the, big, the business becomes established. After a period of time, the business will then reach maturity, where performance becomes more stable. Thereafter, the business may enter another growth phase or possibly going to decline, particularly if it's operating in a rapidly changing market. Alternatively, the entrepreneur may look to exit the business at this stage. Looking first at the startup phase, let us look at the typical business characteristics and where funding can be sourced from. By definition, a business in startup will be a new venture, often set up by an entrepreneur, and who may operate as a one man band or with a very small number of others. Often constituted on a self-employed basis, or possibly a partnership, the business will have an idea and concept for its products and service, and will be trying to develop their market proposition and gain acceptability for what they are doing. Everything will be new, with flexibility and resilience the key to success. Having a business plan is absolutely critical in this phase, a document that will articulate the vision and drive that the owner has for the business. Funding for startup businesses usually comes from the entrepreneur or founders themselves, although sometimes supplemented by their friends and family. External funders, either debt or equity, will believe there is too much risk in the business to make an investment, although these barriers will gradually come down as the business starts to enter a growth phase. Government or European grants are sometimes available for startup businesses, especially when linked to the creation of jobs or investment into new equipment or premises. However, raising funds is always challenging for a startup business and perseverance is needed to, to succeed, which is where a good business plan comes in. Once the business moves beyond startup into a growth phase, the funding options can change. However, there is rarely a clear demarcation between startup and growth, but it is generally associated with the products and services becoming established in the marketplace and with a consequential increase in demand, allowing high levels of sales to be made. As the business becomes established, there is also then a need to make the most of the opportunity, which is where funding comes in. The growth phase will require the entrepreneur to let go and bring others into the fold to support the increase in management requirements. And there will also typically be many issues arising from the rapid change that the business might be going through. It is often said that management is the key issue that funders will look at before lending or investing money at this stage. In terms of funding opportunities, entering a growth phase will open up different sources. Business angels are often the first port of call and they will generally invest equity ahead of an acceleration in sales, albeit they will need to see detailed plans and market assessments to support the financial projections. Venture capital is another form of private equity fundraising and typically provided by specialist organisations with funds to invest in growth businesses. These will often invest slightly later than business angels, but with larger amounts of money. As the business starts to prove its sales proposition and can generate cash and profits therefrom, there will be potential to raise bank debt. 
Asset-based lenders will generally be the first to offer debt, as their offering will be linked to the availability of assets which they can use for security. Once sales and financial performance start to become proven, with a demonstrable track record, more mainstream banks will begin to consider lending, albeit under current regimes they are still considered to be very risk-averse. Eventually, most growth businesses begin to plateau and enter a mature phase. It is then that raising funds becomes easier, but this can also change the nature of funding that is available. A matured business will typically have less need for funding. If successful, it is likely to be generating cash rather than absorbing it, and will often be referred to as a cash cow. The business will have established and robust systems and processes, the management team will have evolved, and the products and services will be established in the marketplace, often with strong branding. When in a mature phase, management teams may also be looking for new opportunities to stimulate a further growth phase, such as investment in new products, new markets or international expansion, all of which will have their own funding demands. Ironically, and perhaps not surprisingly, it is in this maturity phase, i.e. when funding is not necessarily needed, that it is most available. Having said that, private equity is generally not suitable for mature businesses, as the opportunity to make a financial return commensurate with equity financing risk is not available. However, traditional lending from banks will become available, especially if it is replacing other forms of secured debt. If there's a, a, an established track record of both generating cash and profits, but also in managing debt, then traditional funding routes from the banks will open up. It is also at this phase that public monies, through flotation, can be considered. Funding from an IPO can be used in a variety of ways, including further expansion for the business, replacing existing debt, or as a means of realising some value in the business for the founders and management. The final phase of the business life cycle is decline or rebirth, and again there are differences to affect the funding sources. It is very difficult for a business to stay in a mature, plateaued state, and hence there is an, an inevitable need to either grow again or risk a shrinkage in the business. This is no more normal than normal business pressures. Markets move on, and as such, demands of products and services will change, requiring a business to similarly evolve. Raising money is rarely required if a business is in decline. But if a growth phase is entered again, there is, sim there is similarity to that previously described, albeit each cycle of growth becomes progressively easier as the management team becomes more established. If the owner is looking for an exit from the business, there are various sources of money to fund this. Raising such financing is really the responsibility of, look of those looking to buy the business, although an understanding of the likely sources can influence the approach taken to an exit strategy. Selling to the management team is common, and this can often involve private equity funding, as is selling to other businesses who may have a strategic as well as a financial interest in acquiring the business. Each of these are covered in other videos that we have produced. We hope that was useful. If you have any questions, give us a call on 01565 756 141, or have a look around fundingstore.com.